Hey there. You'll, uh, <coughs> you'll never guess what we are doing today. And no, it's not another hike or adventure. Today, we are going to attempt to build a headboard. Now, you might ask why we want to build a headboard. Well, for the past four years of our relationship, I've only asked Seth for a headboard probably every six months or so, and I wanted him to build it because to me that's more special. We could take it with us, and it kind of gives us some like sentimental feelings. So today, since we have some extra time, we didn't plan anything for this weekend, we're gonna head over to Home Depot, buy some wood, and build us a headboard. So, with building the headboard, Megan has asked me to build one for a very long time. However, in this relationship, Megan uh, runs our finances. So I've told her, anytime you wanna do it, let me know and we'll go buy the stuff. Well, it finally got to the point where I'm tired of the mattress not quite meeting the wall because of the, the molding along the bottom, the trim, and the pillow sinks down. So I'm, I got tired of it. So I told Megan, this is the weekend that we do it. There's nothing out that we wanna go do right now. Um, we're waiting on some other things, some big adventures coming up here in the next month and a half. So this was, this was the perfect opportunity. So we have our list. We have measured all we need to measure. And in all honesty, I think this is going to be more expensive than any adventure we could probably go on. Because <laughs> there's other things Megan wants, like a tree. This is going to be tree number two in the house because we have to have a cat tree. Um, and just all kinds of things. So we're gonna take you along on our journey to the center of Home Depot. Let's go. Made it to Home Depot. Let's go do some shopping. So we're running into a dilemma here. We can't decide between two different Christmas trees. One is $350, really nice, has the lights on it, would last for a really long time. The other option is going cheaper and putting our own lights on the tree, so we don't know what to do. So we ended up deciding on the Christmas tree we're gonna get, but in order to find out which one we decided on, you're gonna have to go to our Instagram, which is linked below, to find out. All right, so here we are in the expensive aisle. <laughs> and here's where we get to pick out the wood that's gonna be our headboard for the next 100 years. Okay, so that was expensive. Oh, so expensive. Um, everything's bought though, everything's done. So time to go home and start putting everything together. First though, I need to finish my coffee because dealing with people, I have not had near enough caffeine today. <laughs> True. Okay, so the first thing we did was measure the width of our bed, which was six foot, 
six and a half inches. Um, we went to Home Depot. We decided that we didn't want really wide slats because our slats are gonna run horizontal, making the bed frame or the headboard. So we got these, these are one by six. Um, they were eight foot tall, so we had them cut to scale. And don't ask Home Depot to cut your wood for you because they're not very nice about it. So we got, uh, we have six of those that are gonna run horizontally down. And we're not running them all the way down to the floor. We're only gonna meet them at the frame of the bed. Um, so that way they're kind of inset against the mattress. Then we got these. Um, I believe these are like one by three or something like that. And we got two of these and these are gonna be kind of our, whatever you wanna call it in the back. This is what we're gonna mount to the bed and screw in to the back of the headboard. Um, so like I said, we got two of these, they're 54 inches tall. So this is how tall our headboard is gonna be. So first thing we're gonna do, um, we have to go an inch in from each side and that's where the bolts are gonna go through on these. And then that's where these are gonna attach to the backs of these. So, let's get started. All right, so we've gotten our markings where the bolts are gonna go. Now what we're doing is laying the boards out to see in what order we want these to go. And then we're gonna kinda line everything up and get the holes right so that we can go ahead and drill the holes and get everything squared away to be able to put all of it together. getting everything ready so we can start drilling. On our boards here we measured in an inch and then we measured up two and three quarters of an inch, made a little dot, and that's where we're going to be drilling the holes so then when we put our back pieces on we can just screw right into the holes and get going. So we just pre-drilled all of our holes. Um, we're taking this drill bit out now. And what we're actually going to do oops, is something I learned in uh, tech class a very long time ago. So we're taking a much bigger drill bit. And I'm just going to mark how far down I want to go all the way around and then what I'm going to do is only drill that far into each hole so that way when we put our screws in they are going to set flush with the wood instead of protruding out of the wood and potentially catching pillowcases or whatever. So we have our, uh, our bit marked here, that's as far down as we're gonna go into each one. And we're just gonna drill straight down until we hit that line. And then, like I said, when we put the screws in later, they'll set more flush with the wood. So, let's go.
trick I think I learned from my dad, or maybe, I don't know, I don't actually know where I got this from, but we'll go with that. So we didn't have a lot of like monetary room to play with, um, so we just got these boards, and I mean they're kind of straight-ish, a few are a little off-center, so what I'm actually going to do is use this ratchet strap and I'm going to come underneath with it, like so. Make sure it's nice and flat. Under here. I'm going to come back a ways. Go link these two, or try to at least. And then I'm actually just going to start ratcheting this together so I can pull all of these closer. And then when we screw this in and have it glued down, now they're not split apart in the middle as wide as what they would be. super flat. So we ended up taking the extra wood that we had and put a slab in the middle just so it would lay flatter. Um, the glue time is now dry so we're going to take that safety, not safety strap, but the ratchet strap off and get to sanding. Alright, sanding's done. We are going to uh, wipe this off, get all the dust off of it. We have some cloth over here that we're going to put down on our super tiny porch. And then uh, we're going to stain. So, uh, first coat is done. We are going to wait an hour from right now. It's already almost dry. Like I said, it's about 70 degrees here. Um, so, we're going to let this dry for about an hour. We're going to come out. We're going to hit it with a second coat. We're going to let that dry for an hour. We're going to flip it. Do one coat on the back because I don't really need two coats on the back. I just want a coat to protect it from moisture and anything like that. Um, after that, we'll come back out and then we'll let some soak down in between the boards here. Typically I would do all of this and then put it together. Um, we didn't do that today, just personal preference I guess. But that's about it, so let's head in, chill for an hour. And then we got some more to do. Second coat is done on the front of it. We're going to let this dry maybe about an hour and a half this time. Um, I might end up doing three coats to be completely honest. We'll see how this sets. But I'm, I might end up doing three coats and one on the back. Um, if I do three, I'll hit the back next and then the front again. But uh, yeah, so hour and a half. See you then. All right, well, as you can see, we have uh, run out of daytime. So we've got the light on in here. Right here is the board. It's still a little too tacky, in my opinion, to throw on that last coat. And this really sucks because tomorrow's Sunday and usually we upload Sunday mornings. So if you're waiting for an upload, 
It's not gonna happen. We're gonna, like I said, let this dry. We'll finish it up in the morning after church, get that coat on the back, and then we'll get that coat in the center cracks of the boards. But I was hoping it was gonna be a one day project. It wasn't the case. So we're gonna have uh, some dinner, get to bed, see you tomorrow. Good morning. So, like I said, we have two coats on this. Um, we just got home from church. I'm gonna throw the third coat on here. Um, I haven't decided yet, but an option that you can do is if you're kind of having some, some piling, like this stain, like right in sections like this, you can take a very smooth grit sandpaper, like 220, and uh, just kind of do a very light, 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 light sand on top of it. Since this is never going to be outside, I really don't care if it's, you know, working really hard to, to retain or to protect itself from moisture because it's not going to, not going to have any. And here in Colorado, the air is pretty dry anyways, especially inside of our home. So uh, we're, we are going to throw a third coat here. We're going to let it dry. We're going to flip it around. We're going to hit the back with a coat. And then we might end up roughing this up with some sandpaper. But we'll see how it looks after this last coat. So let's get started. It's been probably two days now. Uh, we've been just incredibly busy, so I haven't really gotten a chance to do anything other than put a coat on the back. I just got home a few minutes ago. I took a 400 grit sandpaper and very lightly went over the front of this. Now I've got a cloth, uh, paper towels wadded up, that are just super lightly dampened, like almost no water whatsoever. We're gonna get this dust off, and then I'm probably gonna do one more coat and fill in the cracks, let it dry, and we should be done. All right, so sanding is done. Third layer is on. We're gonna wait for this to dry. Um, I still need to get in between the cracks because I can still see some lighter colored wood right in between each board at certain spots. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm going to prop it up against the other side of this little patio. I'm gonna take the plastic, lay it on the ground uh, get all the dirt and sawdust off and all that jazz. Lay this down on top of it and then kind of just soak each line. Let it, uh, let it get down in there, get coated, and then I'll set it back up and let it that dry and we'll be good to go. Okay, so the headboard has come to a complete and full dry. Um, Megan says all the smell is gone. As you can see, the headboard is matching the cat hut. The only thing left we have to do is install it. So, the last thing that we're doing, now that the headboard is attached, is we're using these felt backers um, and we're putting those on because I don't want as you get into the bed um, or if we're like you know watching a movie and you're leaning against the headboard I don't want the headboard to one be audibly loud against the wall and second I don't want it to leave markings so that's why I'm taking Again, these sticky uh, felt backers, and I'm putting those on um, each 
uh, back brace, one at the top, and one near the bottom where it meets the bed, right above where the bolts come out. Um, so hopefully this will rest against these felt backers as opposed to um, the bolt or the bare wood. Now the other thing that I'm doing is I have some of these, uh, if I can get one, these little finishing screws. And I'm going to take one finishing screw and go straight through the center of each one of these because a lot of times this adhesive doesn't stick the greatest. Well, here is the completed final project. I think it looks good. Um, it took longer than expected. I, we were thinking build it in a day, have it stained, and then within a day or two we could put it on. But our schedules did not allow for that. So it's been a week long project, um, not very labor intensive whatsoever. We just moving in, we don't have you know tools or anything like that or really any place for tools. Home Depot did the cutting for us, even as much of a struggle as that was. Um, but all in all, super simple project. We did it in a one bedroom apartment outside on a three by five foot patio. So again, super simple. If you want to make something like this, um, super easy, just uh, measure twice, cut once. If you like the style of this video, leave a comment down below, let us know so that we know to make more videos like this because we do make a lot of things for in our house. Instead of buying plastic junk from Ikea or whatever, a lot of things we just make ourselves. Um, if you don't like this style of video, then don't watch it. <laughs> but yeah, so we have tons of stuff coming up for December. Um, it's getting kind of hard to find video ideas because being in Colorado before, we had a lot of stuff that we did. And, a lot of stuff is hiking here. A lot, it's a lot of outdoor things or food. And if you know from Scottsdale, I don't enjoy food videos. They're very... <laughs> uh, there's too many variables involved in food videos. But there's, there's still a lot coming. We have Comment down below if you want to see me try to ski for the first time. Because I've never done it. Please, please <laughs> comment down below. I would if love to we see get that. 10 comments of saying I need to ski, then I'll try it. That's not that many. That's not that many. <laughs> I hope we get 10 comments. <laughs> if you liked today's video, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and we will see you on the next one.